Um, so thanks for getting on tonight. It's um, we're here for winging it backyard birds, and tonight's topic is going to be the common birds of Ohio. And I'm not talking because I love birds. I don't know much about birds. And so JT um, from the Ohio State Extension Office here in Butler County is going to be providing tonight's presentation. And then next Tuesday, also at 7 p.m., we'll be having Creating a Bird-Friendly Habitat. And that'll be Kathy and I think her husband Troy as well, Schwabel from the, um, let me get this right, the Hamilton Conservation Corps, the take care of a huge area in Hamilton called Riverside Natural Area. So they'll be on next week to provide the, the topic then, which again is creating a bird-friendly habitat. Now, tonight, if you have a bunch of questions when JT is talking, there is a chat box. In some computers, it's visible at the bottom. So if you just kind of scroll down to the bottom of your screen, it should pop up with a bunch of options down there. And one of them is chat and you can type into the chat box. And we think we're gonna save the questions until the end. Um, if there's anything else that might help people, JT? I think in chat. Uh, I don't think so. Um, just make sure you got your volume up um, because I'm going to be playing a lot of sounds. Okay. Um, you'll be able to hear a lot of the birds. So uh, make sure you've got your volume up pretty well so you can hear them pretty well. Some of them are not very loud. They're just real faint, quick uh, chirps type things. So you may not hear those. Oh, and if your computer starts kind of like going choppy, turn the video off that is showing your face because um, it uses extra bandwidth. So if you find that your, your connection is a bit choppy, turn your face off, basically. <laughs> um, everyone is going to be kept on mute while JT does his thing. So again, if you've got any questions, um, shove them in that chat box and we'll, we'll make sure to cover those at the end. And... It will be shared. I've already written in the chat box. It will be shared on my website. So I'm Lynn White. I'm with Butler Soil and Water Conservation District. So it'll be on our website and also our YouTube channel. Um, it'll take me a few days to get it up there just because, hey, I'm teaching all day tomorrow. Um, but they will be available after the fact. So thanks for showing up, everyone. And I'm going to turn it over to JT and mute myself. All right. Thanks for having me out here today. Uh, my name is JT Benitez. I'm the Extension Educator for Agriculture and Natural Resources for Ohio State University Extension in Butler County. I'm gonna to talk to you today about common Southwest Ohio birds. I've actually kind of broke uh, down a little bit of the type of birds that are in our area. Um, some of the birds that are throughout Ohio aren't necessarily in our area. So we're gonna focus on uh, what is down here. Most of these birds are gonna be throughout the state. Some will be more focused down in this area. The birds I did not talk about today, um, I have another presentation where I do talk about all those, but uh, they're more towards the Lake Erie area and they're more specific to that area because of the lake um, and other factors or in Southeast Ohio. So uh, maybe we'll talk about common Southwest Ohio birds. Let me, uh, let me uh, turn my video off too so I don't have any issues as well. And we'll get started here. Is there a little bar at the top or no? It looks clean, no gray bar. Lynn. Sorry, I had to unmute myself. Yeah, it looks okay. good. Okay. All right. So like I said, there's me. I was at the uh, Farm Science Review in 2019 before COVID, you know, and enjoying hanging out by the biggest uh, combine I've ever seen. And I had to get a picture next to that. So uh, that's me right there uh, during the pre-COVID days on a nice sunny day in uh, September there. So facts about Ohio birds. Uh, there's 421 species of birds that have been documented in Ohio, and 40 of these birds have only been seen one time at one time. Around 300 species of birds uh, occur annually in Ohio. They migrate, obviously, in and out. Some of them are residents. Um, so there's over 300 of these uh, regularly coming through. And sometimes there's an occasional surprise that may stop by. You just never know. Uh, about 180 species of birds breed every year in Ohio. One third of them actually overwinter in Central, South America, Southern United States, things like that. They, they travel that far back and forth between our state and the South, uh, South American and Central American area. The most numerous bird in Ohio, and I'm going to tell you, this has been the one that's been driving me nuts since the uh, snow's been on the ground going after our cat food, the European starling. There's nine million of these things um, in this um, country as a whole. 
and Ohio, there's probably more than that. Actually, there's 9 million in Ohio. There's probably so many more within the rest of the country. Um, it's one of our biggest problem birds that we have, but it is the most numerous bird. You'll see them along the side of the road where the snow is, um, um, has gone away a little bit here in the last few weeks. Uh, they're right there eating at the dirt there. Uh, there are little flocks of them, big flocks of them. They're, they just, not a fun bird to deal with, but they're one of our, our new residents that came from Europe uh, back in uh, back in the uh, back in the day, I should say. Um, four species are very common, but not native to the state. Like I said, the European starling is from Europe, and devastates are native birds. They actually will cause problems for our nest. They'll knock eggs out of the nest. They'll take food from them. They will cause problems for our native birds. The house sparrow is another one of those native uh, birds to Europe as well. Um, it's another problem for our natives. They will also take over nests and cause problems for our native birds and outcompete them. House finch is from the Western United States and the rock pigeon is from Europe and the Mediterranean region. You will see those occasionally, a lot of times in the city. Uh, New York City probably has a bunch of them, I'm sure. Um, so those are the ones that are typically not from here. Um, those four fun ones there. Sure, the one. European starling and the house bear are usually the worst ones we usually kind of deal with. Um, three three uh, species of birds have actually gone extinct in Ohio and the USA. The passenger pigeon, the Carolina parakeet, and the ivory-billed woodpecker. It's actually very sad to have lost these because they were, uh, they were quite spectacular birds, which I'll show you a picture of those um, here in just a second. Uh, the passenger pigeon was known, um, as the story goes, that the flocks would take hours to fly over an area. That's how many there were at one time. Um, so it's kind of sad to hear that loss of that many and that, you know, birds that it, just millions of them just gone just like that. Uh, the Carolina parakeet was the only type of parakeet found in the U.S. We have not, don't have that any longer. And the ivory bill woodpecker was quite the majestic bird. And they say it may still be around, but has not been spotted since 1944. Some claim that it's still in some of those untouched uh, forests and woodlands um, that has never been, you know, messed with. A lot of um, areas, you know, has been cleared, and things have changed since the 1800s. Obviously, what the land actually used to look like. Um, so uh, those those woodlands that were untouched, they say they may still be some there, but they haven't seen any since 1944. Uh, so here they are, the Carolina parakeet. Uh, the passenger pigeon and the ivory bill woodpecker. The passenger pigeon and the Carolina parakeet died in, at the Cincinnati Zoo in the 1900s, in the early 1900s. They were the last ones there. Uh, the, in 1914, actually, was when both of them uh, passed on. And I, I do believe, I've, I think I read somewhere, they actually shared the same cage, so that within that same time period. Um, yeah, so it was a quick uh, loss to them in 19 in the 1900s there for those two birds. Uh, like I said, the ivory-billed ivory woodpecker is considered extinct and hasn't been seen since 1944, uh, but they claim they still see sightings of it. But there is a woodpecker in this presentation that looks very similar to it, um, and I'll talk about that one, and you'll see why some people may think it's that one. Okay, so we're gonna talk about um, wild poultry that consists, uh, that live in Ohio, I should say. Uh, so we've got the wild turkey, um, pheasants, which are non-native, I'll talk about them, and then the, the bobwhite quail. The ring-necked pheasant uh, is part of the pheasant and grouse family. This species is originally from Europe and is popular game for hunters. That's the reason it's here. It's very popular uh, for hunters to uh, go after. Its range is usually found throughout the state with, with, with its largest concentrations in northwest and central Ohio. Um, they reside in the state year round. The habitat, they prefer the open countryside with a mix of tall grasses, fence rows, tree lines, and farm fields. And they're considered omnivores. They like uh, things like buds, roots, berries, insects, spiders, earthworms, sometimes lizards, snakes, uh, might eat a rodent once in a while, a small one, uh, grains, seeds, things like that. Uh, they are, like I said, popular for bird hunting. Many people, or I should say, many have become wild, I should say, uh, because people are actually hunting those um, on different game preserves. They'll raise these birds to uh, release on the game preserve that, um, usually it's a private game preserve, 
Um, and they will uh, let those loose for those hunters to hunt for the day or however many days it takes to do that. Um, usually they have trained bird dogs, things like that. But some of these actually got loose and that's why we have a wild population because they've been doing this a long time. So there is a wild population uh, established in most of the country here if, if there was game preserves with them. Um, if you ever go out to South Dakota or out West, um, I was out there several, several years ago. They actually used to fly right across the road. They were, they were everywhere out there um, because it was a popular place to uh, have the game, um, have them as game, you know, um, for hunting. So here is them uh, making their call. Did you hear that okay, Lynn? Yes. Okay, good. Excellent. All right. So that was its call. That's how it sounds. Okay. And now we have the wild turkey. The wild turkey is part, did I skip? No. Okay. The wild turkey is part of the family of pheasants and grouse. They range throughout Ohio but are most common in the unglaciated areas of Ohio, which is in the eastern and southeastern Ohio, which I usually call hill country Ohio. It's where the glaciers never hit um, as they came across the state. They are year-round residents, and they have made a great comeback in our southwest Ohio region. When I was a kid in Warren County, there was no turkeys here, and now there's turkeys here, and they've made it over to Butler County as well. They're up in Preble County. They're up in Indiana, uh, Hamilton County, Fairmont County, definitely. So they've made a great comeback to our area. Uh, their habitat consists of woodlands, forest fields, and fence rows. Um, they will roost in trees at night. They're a very large bird and they actually fly up into the trees at night. You will hear these things fly up and fly down. They're, they're very noisy when they go up there. And that's to protect themselves from predators. Uh, they're considered omnivores. And so they like leaves, acorn seeds, grains, berries, um, bulbs, insects, spiders, snails, frogs, lizards, salamanders, um, you name it, they, they enjoy that. And here we have a hen here on the left, and then we have the male gobbler um, on the right there. So I will, as it's going here, I will try to uh, make their, make known to you which one is which when they are making their noises here. This is the hen talking. And that's the gobbler making his noise there. So she's calling him and then he's making the gobble noise. So that's the hen on the left is making the, the kind of like the, the, the nice smooth noise and he's making the very loud gobble gobble noise. So that's the turkey. And that's the hen again right there as well. Okay, very cool. This one right here, um, I love this bird. It's not very common anymore, unfortunately, due to habitat loss and predation. Um, but let me tell you about the Northern Bobwhite Quail. It's in the family of New World Quail. They range primarily in the far Southern edge of Ohio and they are becoming a very, very rare sight to see, unfortunately. Um, they were once prevalent in large numbers, uh, but like I said, they they are just not doing that great. They reside throughout the state um, and they're here year round, but they're just getting more and more rare. Um, predators, um, raccoons, cats, um, dogs, coyotes, they all are doing very well and they have taken quite a hit on the quail. And that's why you're seeing a lot of that. And of course their habitat, they like the grassy uh, edge of woodland areas. Uh, that's a lot of their habitat, uh, brushy thickets. Uh, scattered trees. They like that type of area. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of cover for them as in those areas as well, and they become quite the targets sometimes. Hawks will get them too, owls, um, eagles, things like that. Um, their diet consists of acorns, roots, seeds, insects, spiders, and snails. Um, and uh, a lot of insects are usually eaten mostly in the summertime while they eat those other items in the wintertime. Uh, I grew up here in these a lot at my house in Warren County. I haven't heard one in a long time. And then I lived up in Indiana uh, for several years. I used to hear them there. Um, so I was always glad to hear that, but there wasn't a whole lot around there, but there was a few out by my house in Indiana. And here's how they sound.
I hope some of you have some still around you because these are quite the birds to listen to um, when you hear them. And you can whistle right back at them and they'll whistle back at you as well. So they're very cool, very cool birds. Okay, hawks and falcons. Uh, red tail hawks are in the family of hawks. Um, also enemy number one for my chickens and my ducks. <laughs> uh, American kestrels are in the family of falcons. I have one of these American kestrels in my yard almost every single day roosting on a uh, tea steak or a post. Um, I see them all the time. It's very cool to see it. Uh, both are considered birds of prey. They range throughout the state of Ohio and they're here year round. They like open landscapes, parks, meadows, farm fields, woodlots, forest, and along roadways. You'll see them on the telephone lines a lot of times looking for those mice and sometimes the roadkill. They'll probably eat that as well. Um, they're very adaptable to all the regions in Ohio and their diet consists of small mammals, birds, reptiles, voles, rats, rabbits, squirrels are all their major prey, but they'll also eat pheasants and of course chickens and ducks, things like that if they can get a hold of them. They'll eat snakes, bats, frogs, toads, insects and other things like that as well. Here is the red tail hawk. <laughs> We're pretty used to hearing that one a lot of times. So yeah, you'll hear that one a lot of times uh, when you're outside, you'll hear that in the distance there. The American kestrel may not be one you hear as much, but here, here's this one. Okay, and that is such a cool bird to see fly in all the time. Luckily, they're small. They don't eat my chickens, so that's good. <laughs> Killdeer is a very popular bird on my uh, new property I'm at here in Warren County. Uh, I live on a very muddy, seems like today, very muddy place after all this snow, and they really like this environment here. So I'll, I'll, let me tell you a little bit about them. Uh, Killdeer is in the family called Plovers. They range throughout the state of Ohio. They're considered a migratory bird in the northern half of Ohio. Uh, but are considered residents in Southern Ohio. I'll tell you what though, I have not seen them since the summertime here. Um, it's been kind of a cold, yucky winter. So maybe they've uh, migrated a little bit out of this area to get some nicer weather. Though it hasn't been really nice even down in the Texas. So I don't know where they've gone to, to get away from some of the mess uh, of winter here. Um, they like all type of types of open areas. Uh, they like the mud flats, which I feel like my house is right now, large open fields and muddy pastures. Um, and they're very common at my house here. They, they have nests right out in the middle of uh, driveways uh, and muddy, just in the random spot in the yard. Um, that's how, this is the environment they enjoy. Uh, they mostly eat insects, uh, beetles, caterpillars, grasshoppers, fly larvae, spiders, earthworms, crayfish, snails, and they'll eat some seeds as well. And here's how they sound. You'll recognize this. A lot of times if you go like to the ballpark um, you may hear those there because they're, it's a nice spot for them to be as well. I'm sure you all have heard that bird. It, it makes a lot of noise a lot of times. Okay, so let's head on to this next one here. The morning dove, one of my favorite ones to listen to, um, especially in the early morning or late evening, they're usually making a nice, nice uh, sound, very calm bird, very relaxed, nice little bird to have around. They're, they're part of the family of pigeons and doves, and they range throughout Ohio, and they're very abundant. There's plenty of them around. Um, they're year-round residents, like I said, adaptable to almost everything around. They do very well. Backyards, parks, open countryside, Cities, pastures, fields, woodlands, just about anywhere. Subdivisions, things like that. Their diet consists of 99% of seeds. Um, they, uh, they like cultivated grains, grasses, ragweeds, or any other seeds that might be out there. Uh, probably sunflower seeds, uh, things like that. If you have them in your garden, uh, maybe some zinnia seeds. Who knows? They just enjoy uh, different seeds um, that they, that's part of their diet. Uh, they may eat insects or snails on occasion. 
but mostly seeds. So here's how they sound. I know most people probably have heard these. So, oh, oh boy. there we go. Uh, so I had a lot of these at my old house in Indiana. They really enjoyed hanging out in the pine trees, the white pine trees. Um, there was quite a few that uh, were there at that house when I lived there. Very cool to listen to. Very much so in the evening. They were very, made that noise a lot in the evening. So very cool bird. Okay, yellow-billed cuckoo. This is, there are several cuckoos within Ohio, uh, but this is the one that's most common down in our area. The other ones may come through once in a while, but they're more in northern and eastern Ohio areas. Um, so they're not necessarily in this area as much. But this one is, this one you probably will hear. It's part of the cuckoo family of birds. It migrates into Ohio during spring and summer season to breed and raise their young. It's very common during uh, migration throughout the state. So this one is probably the most one you'll see throughout the state. Um, you'll likely hear this uh, in the very, um, along some uh, more of larger woodland areas. That's where they like to be. Um, they also be in the scruffy thickets, orchards, and they'll be in fields a lot of times reverting back to woodland. So they like a lot of that edge to larger type mid-sized woodland areas, but with some field access um, and a little bit of some open areas, but mostly they like a little bit more of the thicker woods to be in. Um, their diet consists of caterpillars and other insects. They also eat beetles, like I said, other insects or grasshoppers, small fish, sometimes eggs of other birds, berries and small fruits. That's a problem if they eat the eggs of other birds because then Let's say it's your bluebirds, you know, that's not allowing those birds to reproduce, but that's what they do, but they are native. So that's, that's part of this natural process there. So here's how they sound. Um, we definitely have those at my parents' house and they've got some deep woods there uh, with edges of fields around that they can go in and out of. So these are very cool to listen to. Yeah, imagine sitting on your parents' front porch hearing that bird. It's it's something to hear when you're sitting back there. Um, they live deep in the woods, so that's why they've got some they've got some really cool birds over there. And I'll mention them as I go um, that I hear them on a regular basis at my parents' house in their deep woods they live in. All right, so we got some owls here. These are our three most common owls here. You've got the eastern screech owl. You'll hear this one pretty common. The great horned owl. It's here, but I'll tell you, I have not seen it. Uh, myself. Maybe someone else has, but um, I have not. Uh, the barred owl, I have seen on a regular basis and heard uh, at my parents' house growing up. Oh man, they used to be a lot of them back there. Um, and they're in the owl family, of, of course. Um, all these owls range throughout Ohio in all corners of the state and their year-round residence. Their habitat consists of wooded neighborhoods, parks, open woodlands, forest, brushland, fields, farmland, and wherever they can get some prey. So they're, they're pretty adaptable to um, different areas. The Eastern Screech Owl, uh, their diet consists of insects, mostly beetles, moss, crickets, and large insects, maybe some rodents, mice, shrews, um, bats, small birds, lizards, frogs, spiders, and earthworms. Um, the Great Horned Owl, they're gonna get into some of the larger uh, mammals like rats, uh, mice as well, rabbits, squirrels, possums, skunks, geese, maybe a raccoon, ducks, hawks, other owls, snakes, lizards, frogs, some insects, um, and maybe an occasional fish. Um, but they will take on some of the larger items. Of course, chickens, of course. Um, that's a problem for me too. <laughs> uh, the barred owl, it consists of small mammals mostly, mice, uh, squirrels, rabbits, possums, Shrews, birds, frogs, salamanders, snakes, lizards, um, maybe a crayfish, and maybe an occasional fish as well. So good to have, though, get rid of some of those mice and rat problems. Very good. So the eastern screech owls first. Okay. 
it sounds nothing like the owl that you usually would hear, does it? So if you hear that noise in the woods there or on, out in the fields there, um, that is the Eastern screech owl. It does not make the normal sound of an owl that we're used to kind of hearing. The great horned owl is next. So it's a little quieter um, with its uh, hoot noise that it makes. The barred owl is not. You wait till you hear this one. I, I used to hear this when I was a kid. Oh my goodness, they'd wake you up. When they would all, when several of them would start going, it was, it was very cool to hear. Okay, so yeah, that they make even more noise than that. That's just their normal hoot hoot noise there. So very cool owl. I definitely have seen them up close. Um, they kind of look like a barn owl a little bit in the face, but it is different. Barn owls are not very common around here, so um, you won't hear me talking about them today. But they are around, but not not many. There's not many. Uh, the common night hawk is our next one here, and whippoorwill. Uh, they're part of the night jars family of birds. They're migratory birds that reside in Ohio during spring and summer to breed and raise their young. Common night hawks are common throughout Ohio, while the whippoorwills are in decline and less common, unfortunately. They're in throughout Ohio as well. Um, but you'll see them more necessarily in the southern and eastern part of Ohio. They're in this area too. I don't know if you real, know that uh, there's a camp over here in Warren County called Camp Whippoorwill. So it's named after the bird. Um, I guess there used to be a lot of those there at one time. I'm sure there still possibly is. Um, common night hawks habit consists of open country and are often seen in, air, in the air over cities and towns as well. Um, it habits all kinds of uh, open and semi-open terrain, including clearings in the forest, open pine woods, prairie country, farmland, uh, parks, suburbs, city centers. They're very adaptable um, to their environment. Whippoorwill's habitat consists of leafy woodlands of either deciduous forest or mixed uh, deciduous with conifers, or pines, things like that, spruce trees. Uh, common nighthawks feed mostly on insects, beetles, moss, grasshoppers. Uh, winged ants or termites are one of their favorite ones as well. Uh, Whippoorwill will feed primarily on night flying insects such as moths, beetles, mosquitoes. Thank goodness for that, they eat the mosquitoes and many other uh, night flying insects. Um, I wish there was more of them to get rid of these mosquitoes, let me tell you. Um, all right, common nighthawk is the first one to hear. All right, and the whippoorwill is next here. Can you hear why they're called whippoorwill? As, as their sound goes, they're going whippoorwill, whippoorwill. That's their noise. That's why they're called a whippoorwill. All right, the chimney swift. Uh, chimney swift is part of the swift family of birds. They are migratory birds that reside in Ohio um, during spring and summer uh, to breed and raise their young as well. They're common throughout the state. Their habitat is open sky, especially over cities and towns and open fields. Um, they'll forage in those areas. Um, they like flying insects. They are, um, that's what they really like to go after in those areas. Um, they are in some of the forests as well and some uh, woodlands, but mostly they like that. If they're in those areas, they've got a large area to fly around in. Um, one of the reasons their name is called chimney swift is because they love making their nest, of course, in the chimneys, right? Um, that's usually the most common place you see them a lot of times or in other buildings around uh, houses and barns and things like that. So that's where they get their name at. Uh, their diet consists of all kinds of flying insects, flies, uh, moss, um, swarming insects such as uh, winged ants, um, anything that's flying through. I'm sure they'll eat mosquitoes too, uh, but that's their preference of their type of food as well. 
So here they are, um, the sound of them. That one might be a little harder to hear. They're very quiet um, with their sound there. Um, so let's move on. One of the favorites of, oh, I think, probably everybody on this presentation today is, of course, the, the hummingbird, the ruby-throated hummingbird. Um, it's part of the hummingbird family of birds. They're migratory birds. Um, they come into Ohio once it's warm in the spring and summer to breed and raise their young, and they're common throughout our state. Um, they will not be here in winter. They will not survive the cold winters here. They are long gone by the time the cold air gets here. They are out of here. Um, they migrate down to the southern areas of the U.S. and South Florida, maybe even to Mexico, those areas, um, for the warm weather where it stays warm year-round. They cannot survive here at all. Um, their habitats consist of your backyard. Obviously, they're always at our feeders, uh, especially if you're putting out the hummingbird feeders, I should say. Uh, they like mature forest, woodlands, flower gardens. Wherever there's flowers and nectar, that's where they're going to be. Um, that's where they want to be feeding on. They like um, uh, flowers to have uh, that tubular type flower, as you can see in the picture on the right. Um, that's their type of flower. They really like to go out there, stick their nose down in there and get the nectar out of there. Um, they also feed on sugar water mixtures um, that you would put out for um, your hummingbirds, but be sure to pick a good healthy one to give out to them because some of it's not as healthy for them. Um, but yeah, they're very cool to see come up to your windows, and sometimes they come up to your windows. Uh, maybe they've been there year after year or something. Sometimes they come back and you haven't sent the feeders out. I know my mom used to have that. They'd come up to the window, let, let her know they're back, and then she'd get the feeder out for them. I don't know if anybody has that happen, but we always thought that was pretty neat when that happened. Um, so here's how they sound. So you could hear the winds, or not winds, the wings, I should say, in the background there with the little chirping of the hummingbird. They fly very fast with those wings, or their wings move very fast, and they fly fast as well. Uh, okay, so now we're into several different types of woodpeckers. Um, I know I've heard just about every one of these at my parents' house growing up. Um, so they're very, very, very vocal birds. Um, they make a lot of noise hitting the side of the trees, and they do a lot of good for your tree. Uh, to get the bugs out, but generally that means something's already happened to your tree while they're at your tree. See, you can see those trees aren't looking so great, and that's the woodpecker's favorite place to go is the trees that aren't doing well. They're getting the bad bugs, but usually the tree's not doing that well by that point usually. The red-headed woodpecker and the red-bellied woodpeckers are from the woodpecker family of birds. These two woodpeckers have a range throughout Ohio in all corners of the state. The red-headed woodpecker is a year-round resident in southern Ohio and is a migratory bird into northern Ohio. The red-bellied woodpecker is a year-round resident throughout the state. Their habitats are similar and both prefer large woodlands, forest land, anywhere where older established trees are. So my parents have a lot of older established trees, so there's lots and lots of those in our, in our woods. And there's probably about 200 acres of a very old forest that surrounds my my parents and they they are very prevalent in those woods um let's see here oh and they're omnivores uh, their diet consists of insects spiders earthworms tree frogs um a lot of the uh, borers that would be in the trees the worms that are in there um the different uh, problem insects that kill kill the trees they're going after a lot of that as well wild and cultivated fruit sometimes a small rodent some eggs and nestings of other birds nestlings i should say of other birds as well and here is the red-headed woodpecker first. And now here is the red-bellied woodpecker. Yeah, so I, I've seen those um, on a regular basis at my parents' house, um, several of these. I don't know if I've seen the one on the left as much, 
but they're definitely the one on the right. All right, so here's another uh, category of woodpeckers here. Um, you've got the downy and the hairy woodpecker are part of the woodpecker family of birds. Uh, they range throughout Ohio in all corners of the state, and they are both year-round residents of Ohio. Both of these woodpeckers are found in forest, woodlands, uh, willows, river groves, orchards, and shade trees. They're just about anywhere where there's lots of good trees. The downy woodpecker is found with, in a wide variety of habitats from wilderness areas to second growth woods, to suburban yards, and generally favors anything deciduous type trees. The hairy woodpecker is less tolerant of the forest fragmentation. They like a larger stretch of woods. So 100, 200 acres or more, they, they really like that a lot better than having a little 10 acre woodland spot. They like to have that large expansive area of, of woodlands uh, to, to live in. Um, so that, that's the type of area that they're gonna prefer the best. Uh, these woodpeckers feed mostly on insects as well, ants, wasps, caterpillars. Um, they'll eat seeds and berries. Um, you'll see them at your bird feeders too, after those seeds that you put out. Um, sometimes they'll eat those, the larvae of the wood boring insects as well, um, wood boring beetles and insects and things like that. Um, here's the downy woodpecker first. Okay, and the hairy woodpeckers next. I know that one very well. I've heard that one a lot um, as well. Okay, so then we've got the northern flicker and the the uh, pileated woodpeckers. Pileated, I'm sorry, pileated. I always say that one wrong. It's also in the woodpecker family of birds. These two woodpeckers have arranged throughout Ohio and uh, in all corners of the state. They're year-round residents. Um, Northern flicker is very common. You will see this one a lot. Uh, the pileated woodpecker is very rare to see in Ohio. Um, you don't see it on a regular basis or in large numbers. Um, so if you've seen this one, cool. You should let us know, let us know. Northern flickers prefer its habitat to be open country and scattered woodlots and likes to set up um, likes this setup more than any other woodpecker. It's very adaptable to different uh, wood, woodland type situations. Um, the pileated woodpecker is very picky um, of its habitat and prefers uh, large mature forest. So the one on the right, the pileated woodpecker, pileated, I'm sorry, pileated. Um, it likes that large expansive woodlands again. So Southeast Ohio has a lot of large woodlands. Uh, Southern Ohio and Southwest Ohio here um, there's parts like in Cincinnati that have some untouched woodlands that they would do well in, right around Hamilton County, some of those hills. Western Butler County has a lot of area that's not farmed because it's large woodlands with big hills. They do well in that area as well because there's lots and lots of acreage. So the pileated woodpecker would do better in those situations. Uh, Northern Flickers uh, diet consists of insects, of course. Uh, they like a lot of ants. They eat, they're probably one of the most consumers of any bird of ants. Um, so that's one of their most favorite things to eat. They'll eat other things like termites and caterpillars, fruits, berries, seeds, and nuts as well. Uh, the pileated woodpecker uh, diet also consists of ants um, as well as another very popular food item for them as well as fruits and nuts. Uh, carpenter ants actually make up 60% of their diet. So that's a good thing for those uh, problem carpenter ants that we have. Termites as well. They'll eat the larvae of wood boring insects and beetles. Um, and 40% of their diet makes up the rest of the wild fruits, berries, and nuts that it also will eat. Here is the northern flicker. I know everybody has probably heard this one. I have seen and heard that one a lot growing up. This one, I feel like I have heard it. And I don't know if I've seen it. It's been a long time, but I've heard, I feel like I've heard it. It may sound similar to the other ones, but I feel like I have. But um, it's been a long time, but here it is. That sound just sounds familiar like they that it is in my parents' woods, but I, I can't remember. 
I'll have to go over and sit there this summer and see if they're there. But very cool, very cool birds here. Okay, so we've got the flycatchers next. Uh, these are all called tyrant flycatchers. They're in that family of birds. They're migratory birds that reside in Ohio during spring and summer to breed and raise their young as well and common throughout the state. They prefer a habitat of mix of woodlands, forest edges, brushy fields, parks, and wooded neighborhoods. Um, all these birds have a diet of insects. They like wasps, bees, ants, caterpillars, beetles, flies, moss, grasshoppers, cicadas, which is the new thing coming out this year, obviously, aphids, leafhoppers, spiders, millipedes, fruits and berries as well. Um, they may also eat some uh, seeds and little things like that too. Uh, the sound you're going to hear is from the Eastern Wood Peewee and the Eastern Phoebe and the Eastern Kingbird. The rest of these sounds can be found on audubon.org for the other ones, but these are probably the three you're going to hear the most probably around here and see the most. These other ones are a little less common to hear. So here's the Eastern uh, Wood Peewee. Okay, very cool. The next one is the Eastern Phoebe. Yeah, I know I've heard that one, definitely. And the last one is the Eastern Kingbird. That one's a little quieter, so um, it's a little harder to hear, but it's uh, one of the little songbirds there that are really cool to hear. All right, so let's, let's, let's take a look next at the Viero the, the family of birds. Vieros are migratory birds that also reside in Ohio during the spring and summer, and they come back here to raise their young. Uh, most common uh, statewide in Ohio, except for the white-eyed um, Viero, which migrates mostly Southern Ohio, and the blue-headed Viero uh, do, do not migrate or do migrate to Ohio, but are less common and migrate usually further north into Canada. So you may see those, uh, but not as much. Um, the, the habitat of the Vieros range from various woodlands, parks, edges of fields, fence rows, brushy fields, or areas with plenty of large trees and open fields. The diets consist of caterpillars, moss, wasps, bees, ants, bugs, all kinds of different bug flies, walking sticks, cicadas again, um, scale insects for some of those tree problems, they're scale insects, snails and spiders. They'll also eat some berries. Um, a lot of times often like Virginia creeper or sumac, elderberry, blackberry, or dogwoods, they'll eat those berries off of those. Now the sound you're gonna hear is of the white-eyed viero, the yellow-throated viero, and the red-eyed viero are probably the ones I hear the most around here, and that's why I chose those. And like I said, if you want to hear the rest of those other ones, Audubon.org will have those to listen to. So here is the white-eyed uh, bee arrow. Yeah, so I definitely hear that every year, um, that one there. I don't necessarily see a lot of these because they're up in those trees and that's the thing you're going to hear them but you're not necessarily going to see them so now you're a lot of a lot of this presentation is going to put sound to what they look like so that's a lot of reason i include these sounds because it's very hard to see some of these birds as i've never i don't think i've seen them actually unless i look at these pictures here so here's the yellow-throated uh Viero next And the last one here is the red eye Viero. Yep, 
you always hear those on some of the quiet mornings when uh, you're sitting outside on a warm day and it's very quiet in the morning. Um, they seem to be the ones making that noise as a background noise. That's the ones I always seem to hear doing that. All right. Oh, the blue jay. Pretty bird, but can be quite the quite the challenging bird at times too. Blue jays are part of the crows, magpies, and jay family of birds. They are plentiful throughout Ohio and in the state year round. They're the ones running off all your songbirds at the bird feeder this time of year. Um, they'll come strolling up the big big uh, bad bird on campus there. Um, so yeah, they're very common doing that. Um, they prefer habitats of woodlands, mix of oak trees, beech and pine, preferably. Uh, they can see, be seen in suburban areas, towns, cities, parks, and just about anywhere where there's a lot of tree growth. That's where they want to be. Um, they're omnivores. 75% of their diet is vegetable matter, which is acorns, beech nuts, um, other types of nuts, seeds, grains, berries, fruits, cultivated fruits. So your raspberries and blueberries out there, they may go after. Um, they also eat, uh, like I said, caterpillars, grasshoppers, beetles, spiders, snails, other birds' eggs, which is a problem. That can be a problem. Some small rodents, frogs, baby birds of other birds. So that's not good. Um, so they're pretty bird to look at, but they can be kind of a problem as well. So, but they're native here and that's part of the natural process. Here's how they sound. I know everybody's heard this one. Okay, so there's the blue jay. The American crow, I'm pretty sure everyone has probably seen one today because there's that many around here. <laughs> uh, they're part of the crows, magpies, and jay family of birds. Uh, plentiful. There's tons of them. Like I said, you just walk outside in the middle of the day, you'll probably see one flying over. There's that many of them around. They have a diverse habitat. They're just about everywhere. Rural, suburban, urban. Um, they're there to clean up everything. You know, They're always there to find something to feast on garbage, uh, uh, roadkill, things like that. I, there's more things I'll tell you here in just a second. Um, but they like woodlots, farm fields, pastures, meadows, fence rows, parks, wooded areas, anywhere, anytime, they're there. Um, they're omnivores. Like I said, they eat insects, spiders, snails, earthworms, frogs, snakes, shellfish, garbage, eggs of, of other birds. They'll eat other birds, I'm sure. Um, seeds, grains, berries, fruits, and roadkill. I think you see them a lot along the edge of the road. They're usually right there with the vultures a lot of times. Um, but here's their sound. I don't know if anybody's ever seen the movie The Birds, but that picture there on the left kind of looks like that movie sometimes <laughs> and that sound. All right, purple martins and barn swallows. They're all part of the family of swallows. Purple martins and barn swallows are migratory birds that reside in Ohio during spring and summer. Obviously, like most other migratory birds, they raise and, and breed and raise their young, and they're common throughout the state. Purple Martin's habitat consists of large open areas close to areas of bodies, close to areas uh, that consist of large bodies of water. Barn swallows habitat consists of open countryside near agricultural areas. Uh, a lot of times they're in your barns in, in, the, in the countryside. Um, they're very common in the countryside for that. That's why their name is called a barn swallow because that's where they seem to be always nesting and hanging out. Purple Martin feed uh, feeds on a wide variety of flying insects, uh, wasps, winged ants, bees, grasshoppers, flies, including house flies, I'm sure horse flies, crane flies, beetles, moths, butterflies, dragonflies, and some spiders here and there as well. Hopefully some mosquitoes. I'm always going to encourage those birds for that. Uh, barn swallow feeds on a, also a lot of flying insects, especially flies, horse and house flies. Um, very common for them to go after this, which is good. I've always seen a barn swallow or a purple martin. It seems like every once in a while I'll see them with a big 
big fly, like a horse fly in their mouth flying by. So that's a good thing. Uh, beetles, wasps, bees, winged ants, moths, dam damselflies, grasshoppers, so on and so on with some of that. Uh, they'll occasionally eat some uh, berries or seeds as well. And here is the purple martin. And here's the barn swallow. I know I've heard that one, definitely. And seen that one. Uh, our next one here, two of my favorites. I grew up seeing these birds at our bird feeder at my parents' house a lot. These are very, very common. Cool looking birds, uh, great, um, great songbirds. Um, these are the two in our area here. There is a northern black cap chickadee, but uh, that's more than northern Ohio. So what we'll talk about the Carolina and the tufted titmouse. They're part of the family of birds of uh, chickadees and titmouses. The Carolina chickadee is located throughout Ohio, except in the northern quarter, which is that's where the black cap chickadee resides. Uh, the tufted titmouse is located throughout all of Ohio, and both are year-round residents and are very common visitors to our bird feeders. Like oh, we had that. Well, that was one that hit the. Yeah. Uh, uh, the habitat of the Carolina chickadee oh, consists chicken. of a variety of woodland types, urban mm -hmm. yards, and parks, okay. and they're very adaptable. So the tufted is, titmouse's this habitat consists of forest, yeah. woodlots, parks, and neighborhoods with lots of trees. Which my parents' house has lots and lots of trees. Um, so these two do very well at my parents' house in the deep woods there. Uh, Carolina chickadees, uh, they eat mostly insects, seeds, and berries. Caterpillars make up a major part of their diet with moths, uh, beetles, and aphids, some other ones, and insect um, and spiders. Am I there? Did, I, did you hear me? I, I saw I got muted there. Am I good? Yes, sorry. Okay. I don't, I'll uh, back up just a hair. I don't know if, you, if I got cut off here. It was 10 uh, seconds. 10 seconds? Yeah. Okay. Uh, was it with Carolina chickadees eating their food? Yep. Okay, I'll re re read, that, read that one. Uh, Carolina chickadees, their diet consists of insects, seeds, and berries. Uh, caterpillars make up a majority of what they eat. Um, they also eat moss, beetles, aphids, um, spiders, and other types of insects. They also eat weed and tree seeds, berries, and small fruits. The tufted titmouse diet consists mostly of insects and seeds as well. Um, Two-thirds of their annual diet consists of caterpillars, which they prey on most of the summertime. Uh, they also eat wasps, bees, um, larvae, beetles, scale insects, um, insect eggs, spiders, snails, seeds, nuts, berries, and small fruit as well. And here is the Carolina chickadee. Um, it's the first one here. You'll recognize this sound. Well, did I freeze up? Am I there still, Lynn? I think I froze up. Still there. Yeah, I froze up for a second. Hold on a second. There we go. Can you hear it now? Yeah. Okay. I'll play that one more one more time since I was talking a little bit. That's the Carolina chickadee. All right, and now the tufted titmouse. So that one there always reminds me springs on the way when I'm over there listening in the woods there at my parents' house. It seems like they're always right there in the spring when it's a nice warm day like today. They probably making some noise today because they're liking the warm weather. 
All right, another one I've seen a lot and heard a lot is the white-breasted nuthatch. They're in the family of birds called nuthatches. They're found throughout Ohio and are a year-round resident. And they're one of the few birds that can walk head first horizontal down a tree, as you can see in the picture there. Not many other ones can do that. So they're one of the few that can actually do that. Walk down the side of the tree head first. Uh, their habitats is all kinds of woodland environments, rural woodlots, forest land, parks, neighborhoods with lots of trees. They like a lot of trees. And that's why I see so many at my parents' house and at our bird feeder we had growing up, there was a lot of those at them as well. They feed on insects, spiders, and some seeds. Um, they like the suet peanut butter mixtures on feeders. Um, those are very popular on uh, bird feeders and that's what they like to go after as well. And there they are. So here they are. So if you have a lot of trees around, you're more than likely have heard that or seen that bird. Very cool, very neat looking bird. Really cool how they walk down the side of a tree. Uh, we used to have them uh, nesting in our uh, birdhouse box right near our house. Uh, seems like all every year, all the time, seems like. Okay, so these two wrens here are from our area that you'll see the most of. There's two other types of wrens in the state, but they're not very common in this area. Um, the sedge and the, uh, the uh, marsh wren. They're more up in northern and eastern Ohio. But the Carolina wren, you'll recognize their sound as soon as I play it. And then we have the house wren as well. They're in the family of wrens, the bird family of wrens. Uh, Carolina wrens are the only year-round resident of Ohio and are very common. Uh, the house wrens are migratory birds that resides in Ohio during the spring and summer. And they come here to breed and raise their young. Uh, and the house wren is very common throughout Ohio once they migrate back in. Both of these wrens habitat consists of all types of woodlands and forest and fence rows, brushy woodland edges, parks, and suburban areas. All wrens diets consist mostly of insects as such as caterpillars, beetles, grasshoppers, crickets, mosquitoes, yes, mosquitoes. Uh, flies, which is another one I hate too, flies, house flies especially, my goodness. Um, sometimes some spiders, millipedes, lizards, occasionally some tree frogs, uh, little ones obviously, very small fruits and seeds. You'll see the Carolina wren a lot of times at your bird feeder. And here is the Carolina wren. You will recognize this sound. It's another sign of spring when I hear them too. Like I said, when I hear that bird in the springtime when it's starting to warm up, I know spring is here. I love listening to that one. Uh, house wren is next. Yeah, another one you're going to hear once it is in town here after it migrates back in. Uh, another great bird. Uh, the blue gray uh, gnat catcher is in the uh, family of birds called gnat catchers. It's a migratory bird that resides in Ohio in spring and summer to breed and raise their young, common throughout the state. Habitat consists of deciduous forest and wood par woodlands, parks, and neighborhoods with lots of older large trees. So they, they're probably at my parents' house with lots of large older trees, lots of acreage of trees. That's where they want to be. Uh, they require larger older trees of old growth forest and woodlands because that's their preferred nesting and residing. So that really is important for them to have those old trees um, for nesting. That's very important for them. And their diet consists of insects, leaf hoppers, uh, plant bugs, leaf beetles, caterpillars, flies, wasps, and they'll eat spiders as well, and I'm sure some other insects. Here's how they sound. <laughs> Okay, neat bird. One of my favorite birds, Eastern Bluebird. This is one we're gonna talk about here. The thrush family of birds. You've got the uh, Eastern Bluebird, the uh, the varies, 
the Hermit Thrush, which is both of these are uh, in green or rare. They're not very common to see. The Wood Thrush and the American Robin. I'm pretty sure everybody's seen that one. Um, they're all part of that thrush family of birds. The bluebirds, the veeries, the hermit thrush, the wood thrush are migratory birds that reside in Ohio during spring and summer to breed and raise their young and they're common throughout the state of Ohio. The bluebird is a year round resident in the far southern part of Ohio. It does migrate out. I'll tell you, I've seen them this winter at my property. So they haven't left here and we're in the far southern part of Ohio. So they're probably still here. You'll probably still see them around. I do know I've seen them this winter. Um, and like I said, we're in the far southern part. Um, you start getting into the northern parts, they've migrated out of those areas. Uh, the American Robin is the only year round resident, always after those worms in the yard, right? Uh, Bluebirds habitat consists of all types of open country, farmland, golf courses, meadows, and pastures, which is where I live and that's why they enjoy those areas. Uh, most of the birdhouses you see are to help provide nesting for bluebirds. A lot of times they're called bluebird houses or wren houses. The holes are small. That keeps out some of the bad birds that usually go after these birds. Um, they used to be uh, have a harder time, um, but they're doing better now that we're helping them out. Some. Uh, the veeries, like I said, more rare. The hermit thrush is more rare. And the wood thrush habits, habitat consists of woodland lots, large wooded areas, forest land, Woodlands along cliffs and swamps and old growth forest. The American robins, robin, uh, they're everywhere. They do pretty much uh, do well anywhere they can be. So there's no issues there. They're in the woodlands, forests, fields, parks, urban areas, anywhere they are there. They do great. Um, very adaptable and common throughout the state. Um, all these birds, their, in, their diet consists of insects and berries. Uh, crickets, grasshoppers, beetles, earthworms, especially for the robins, snails, uh, maybe a tree frog or a small lizard, if there's any around here, berries, like I said, very common ones for the meat. Uh, American robins always have to, like I said, after those earthworms in the yard. They're always very good at it. I, I need to uh, train a robin to get uh, worms for me when I need fishing bait, no doubt. All right, so the bird you're going to hear is the eastern bluebird and the American robin. So that's a neat bird. Uh, their 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 song is not very um, you know it's not very loud. It's not very boisterous. It's just a calming type sound. But their their color is what really just is the coolest thing to see with them. And here's the American robin. Yeah, very common here in our yards on a regular basis, especially those little uh, nice quiet mornings, uh, maybe some late evenings you'll hear them. Okay, so we've got mockingbirds and thrashers. Those are the family of birds there. Um, we've got the gray cat bird, which is a common thing I see now at my new property here, the northern mockingbird and the brown thrasher. Gray cat birds and brown thrashers are migratory birds that reside in Ohio during the spring and summer to breed and raise their young. Um, they are common statewide. The Northern Mockingbird is only a year round resident in the far Southern part of Ohio. Otherwise they leave uh, this area. I'm sure you probably may still see them and hear them. I don't know if I've heard one this year or seen one, but they're usually in this area because we're the far Southern area of, uh, of uh, okay, in the far Southern part of uh, Ohio. And uh, let's see, the habitat is shrublands, brushy thickets, forest edges, overgrown pastures, woodlots, suburban backyards are common areas for them. Um, all three birds like insects um, and berries, similar to a lot of the other birds, caterpillars, grasshoppers, crickets, fruits, uh, berries, earthworms, things like that, sometimes nuts as well. The gray catbird, when you hear it, it will sound like a cat at first, and that's why it's called a catbird, like a cat meowing. And that's why the name sounds so uh, interesting. Why, that's why they call it the catbird, because the 
way they do their um, their sound. So here's their three sounds. Here's the gray catbird first. All right, Northern Mockingbird. And the Brown Thrasher. Our next one here, I've never really seen this one, but it's very cool. Cedar waxwing is in the uh, waxwing family of birds. They're found throughout Ohio and are resident in the state year round, especially in Northern Ohio. Uh, they'll be here throughout the winter in Southern Ohio, but more on occasion. Uh, they're very nomadic and flocks can show up anywhere. Um, they prefer habitat of woodlands close to open bodies of water and they cons their food consists of uh, berries and insects, um, similar to a lot of the other uh, birds as well. Um, caterpillars, ants, um, berries from junipers, dogwoods, or wild cherries. So here is their sound. Okay, very cool bird. I wish I'd see those more often. I've never seen one, I should say. Here's warblers. There's tons of warblers, and this is not even all of them. Um, these are just the ones we see down here in southwest Ohio. Blue wing warbler, northern parula, yellow warbler, yellow throated warbler, black and white warbler, American red start, uh, proton, uh, protano terry warbler, oven bird, Kentucky warbler, common yellow throat, and hooded warbler. Chestnut sided, chestnut -sided warbler is rare. Uh, Black-throated green warbler is rare, and the pine warbler is rare. Um, but they're all in the family of warblers. Uh, warblers are migratory birds that reside in Ohio during spring and summer to raise their young. Uh, and their commonalities varies throughout the state of, you know, how many's there and how, when they come in and migrate, things like that. Uh, so some of the some of the food that they eat, some of their their preferences generally is insects. Um, mostly insects, they uh, moss, bugs, ants, grasshoppers, beetles, caterpillars, aphids, grubs, ants, things like that, but some berries. Their habitat ranges for each warbler. Some like open prairies, some like more forest area, some like right along the edge lines. Um, but they like a, you know they like a good mix of things like that to to live in. Uh, but generally, the forest and the woodlands is where they're going to be their more preferred habitat. So the sounds you're going to hear here are the common yellow throat and the yellow warbler. And then the next one here is the common yellow throat. So there's all the warblers. There's lots of, sorry, it's still going. Okay, there we go. There's lots of warblers in Ohio. Um, like I said, they like more of the woodland area, but they, they also be in the some open field, uh, kind of brushy thicket areas, things like that. Very cool birds, lots of different varieties there. Here's the yellow-breasted chat. Uh, they're part of the yellow-breasted chat family of birds. They're migratory. They only live here in spring and summer and leave uh, once the weather get, starts getting, um, not so great. They're more concentrated in Southern Ohio and more on occasion in Northern Ohio. They like overgrown fields, thickets, fence rows, and scrubland. And their diet consists of mostly insects and berries, beetles, bug, different types of bugs, such as ants, bees, wasps, mayflies, grasshoppers, caterpillars, uh, blackberries, elderberries, wild grapes, things like that. Um, here is their sound.
And sparrows, there's lots of different sparrows in Ohio. Uh, we have the Eastern Tohi, the Chipping Sparrow, the Field Sparrow, Vesper Sparrow, uh, Savannah Sparrow, um, Grasshopper Sparrow, Song Sparrow, and the Dark-Eyed Junco. They're all part of the New World Sparrows family of birds. Um, the uh, Eastern Tohi and Field Sparrows are resident birds uh, year round in Southern to Upper Central Ohio. Uh, and they're considered migratory in Northern Ohio. Um, They'll raise their young here, and um, in those type of areas, when they're migratory, they'll raise their young only in the spring and summer, and they're going to migrate more southern, and that's why they stay here year-round. The chipping sparrow and vesper sparrow are migratory birds that reside in Ohio during spring and summer to raise their young, and they're common throughout Ohio as well, and they leave town once it gets too cold here. The savannah sparrow, grasshopper sparrow are migratory birds that reside in Ohio during spring and summer and raise their young here as well. Um, it's not very common to see them in Ohio and they're more on the northern fringes of the state, but you'll see them around. The dark-eyed junco is more common during winter and migrates further north during summertime and out of the state to breed and raise their young. So they, they, they have kind of the opposite effect of that. I have seen those uh, dark-eyed dark -eyed juncos um, at my parents' house too. The song sparrow is a year-round resident of Ohio and their diet consists mostly of seeds and insects, caterpillars, beetles, grasshoppers, uh, seeds of weeds and grasses and berries and things like that. Um, so we're going to listen to the Eastern Tohi and the Song Sparrow. So that was the Eastern, that was the Eastern Tohi and now we'll do the Song Sparrow. Okay, so now we've got a quite a variety here of different type of birds here, cardinals, grosbeaks, and buntings. Um, they're all part of the family of grosbeaks, cardinals, and buntings. Uh, summer tanagers, scarlet tanagers, rose-breasted grosbeaks, blue grosbeaks, uh, indigo buntings, and dick sissels are migratory birds that reside in Ohio during spring and summer to breed and raise their young. Um, and they're all migratory, like I said. I love the indigo bunting. That's one of my favorite ones. Um, they're common throughout the, most of the state of Ohio and some varying ranges in, in level. Northern Cardinal, obviously, that's pretty popular um, throughout most of the state there. You'll see them just about everywhere. And they are actually the only year-round um, resident in this category. Um, Tanagers, preferred habitats are mature deciduous forests, oaks and hickory. The Northern Cardinal is very adaptable and pretty much lives everywhere. The rose-breasted grosbeak, the blue grosbeak, Indigo bunting and the dick sissel prefer habitat uh, to be woodlands, brushy fields, and thickets, fence rows, orchards, and open countryside. And their diet consists mostly of seeds, insects, and berries. Um, you'll see especially the cardinal at your bird feeders a lot, eating those seeds. Um, grasshoppers, caterpillars, ants, flies, uh, waste grain, grass, grasses, uh, seeds of grasses and weeds, um, berries, and wild fruits. The sound you're going to hear is the Northern Cardinal. I know everybody's probably heard this one, and that is the state bird of Ohio. And then the other one, my other favorite bird is the indigo bunting. So we'll have the Northern Cardinal first. And here's the indigo bunting. Oops. I forgot he does that twice. So let me do the indigo bunting now. Okay, next we have the blackbirds and oilers, uh, bobo lynx, red winged blackbirds, eastern meadowlarks, common grackles, brown headed cowbirds, orchard oilers, Baltimore oilers uh, are all these different types here. Baltimore uh, oilers, orchard oilers, bobo lynx are migratory birds that reside in the spring and summer. Um, red winged blackbird, eastern meadowlark, and common grackle. The brown headed cowbirds are year round residents of Ohio and are very common. The preferred habitat of all these birds is open woods, scattered trees, open countryside, fields, meadows, parks, hayfields, and pastures. 
Um, red wing blackbirds, brown headed cowbirds, bobolinks, eastern meadowlarks, orchard orlers, and Baltimore orlers eat insects and seeds. That's most of their um, areas that they like to eat there. Common grackles are omnivores. So they feed on insects, beetle grubs, minnows, frogs, lizards, eggs of young of other young birds. They'll eat other birds as well. Crayfish, um, millipedes, um, earthworms, um, I'm sure seeds, anything they can get a hold of, basically. Berries, waste grain, acorns. Uh, so let's listen to the red wing blackbird. Okay, and the next one here is the common grackle. And last one, next one here is the Baltimore oiler. Our last group of birds, the finches, purple finches, house finches, and the American goldfinch. They're all part of the family of finches. American goldfinch and house finches are year-round residents and are very common in the state. Purple vi uh, fin finches reside mostly along Lake Erie in northern Ohio, uh, but they do migrate into our area here as well, um, come down this way. Uh, but it's less common to see them here. Purple finches' uh, habitat consists of conifer forest and other types of forest and house finches and American goldfinches habitat consists of open areas, yards, gardens, parks, farms, and other urban settings. You'll see them at our bird feeders as well. Very adaptable to living next to humans. And they, like I said, those bird feeders, that's a great sight to see when they do stop by. The diet consists of seeds and insects, um, weed seed, grass seeds, small seeds of um, just a lot of small different types of seeds. Um, and and a few different types of insects with a lot of seeds, it seems like. You can tell by their beaks that they're more of a seed type bird. The sound you're gonna hear is the house finch and the American goldfinch. Okay, and the American goldfinch. So where are some places to look at birds in Butler County? You've got Houston Woods State Park. They've got a good bird blind up there right by the lake to watch some of the birds out there. Keener Park uh, in Westchester. Gilmore Metro Park. The Ellis Lake Wetlands in Westchester. And sometimes your own backyard has a great bird uh, observation area as well. Uh, here's some uh, online resources for any youth activities, uh, Bird Academy Play Lab, Cornell Publishing Group. I thought some of these were cool things uh, to check out. And of course, the National Audubon Society has tons of stuff on birds, tons of stuff. And here's my work cited today. And that is it. I have a survey link I'm going to put in the chat box. If you wouldn't mind uh, clicking there and filling out for the presentation today, I would greatly appreciate that. Um,